All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the general tRNA splicing strategy. How does it work? We're going to see that it's fairly complicated, and it's actually going to require five different enzymes. These are the main enzymes involved. In order, they're going to be a tRNA endonuclease, cyclic phosphodiesterase, adenylate synthetase, an exon ligase, and a 2 prime phosphotransferase. This right here is the general scheme, and we're going to go into each individual step and talk about it as it relates to this picture. All right, so the very first step, and by the way, this is our initial substrate up here. This is the tRNA, and let me explain this. When we look at the tRNA, remember how I said in the previous video, this was our intermediate. This is what we have after base modification, removal of the five prime leader sequence, removal of this, uh, these two U's on the three prime end, addition of the acceptor CCA stem. This is our intermediate, what we have after all that, and base modification. This part right here, this last step to get the mature tRNA, we have to splice out this uh, yellow sequence right here, which is, which is an intron. We need to put together these green exons. So that's why this is classified as splicing. So the first exon is right here. We have that intron sequence in the middle and then exon two. So all tRNAs, once they get to that intermediate, they have two exons and one intron, okay? Now we need to get rid of the intron. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually clip it out. All right, so the first step is gonna be catalyzed by this tRNA endonuclease right here. All right, so what it's gonna do is basically two things. It's going to cause this two prime hydroxyl group of this ribose, that's the three prime end of this exon, to attack this phosphate linkage. Now what does that do? It basically breaks off this intron. We also have exon two hydrolyzed off. All right, so what do we have here if exon two is hydrolyzed off? Well, we have exon two with a, with a five prime hydroxyl, okay? We have an intron with a five prime hydroxyl and a three prime phosphate. And then we have this first exon now with a cyclic phosphate, okay? The two prime and three prime hydroxyls are tied up in that phosphate linkage, all right? So that's what the endonuclease does. And right here you see the two prime, three prime phosph phosphate linkage. And also on the other exon, we have a free five prime hydroxyl. You see that here. And then we have an intron with a three prime phosphate and a five prime hydroxyl. That's what you see here. Well, that's not gonna do us any good. So now what we're gonna have to do is something called cyclic phosphodiesterase. So what that's going to do, and let me actually move this down a little bit. Forgot that was there. That's gonna take that cyclic phosphodiester linkage on the exon and it's gonna hydrolyze it with water. So now you have the phosphate on the two prime position and a free three prime hydroxyl group, okay? So that's all the cyclic phosphodiesterase does. Takes the cyclic phosphate and breaks it with hydrolysis to put it on the two prime hydroxyl exclusively with a free three prime hydroxyl. All right, now we're gonna have two enzymes here. Now we're coming back to the second exon. This uh, enzyme is gonna be called adenylate synthetase. What adenylate synthetase is going to do is it's first of all going to phosphorylate exon two. Once this exon is phosphorylated, it's also going to attach an adenylate group onto that phosphate. So now instead of a phosphorylated five prime position, we have an adenosine diphosphate on the five prime position. Here's the first phosphate, here's the second, here's the adenosine. So we have an adenosine diphosphate on there. That makes this exon especially activated. So now what we're gonna have is the ligase activity. The three prime hydroxyl group on exon one is going to attack that phosphate, the one closest to exon two, and it's gonna do a phosphoryl substitution with the loss of adenosine monophosphate, and that essentially ties together exon one and exon two. That right there is the actual splicing together of the exons. Now we have a problem because now the two prime OH has a phosphate. We need to get rid of that. The way we do that is through an enzyme called 2' prime phosphotransferase. This is an unusual enzyme in the fact that it's gonna use NAD, but not for any kind of electronic purposes. It's not gonna be doing any redox. All right, so here's the mechanism of 2' prime phosphotransferase, just to help you understand what it's doing. Up here, this top black solid line is exon one, and down here, the second one is exon two. So at this point, they've already been spliced together. And of course, we have a phosphodiester linkage between exon two and the ribose ring of exon one. All right, and then we also have this phosphate still on the 2' prime OH, all right, or the 2' prime hydroxyl. Now, the phosphate is initially going to attack 
the anomeric carbon of NAD, it's going to get rid of the nicotinamide. That's what NAD is used for. It's also an activated molecule, so phosphate can attack that loss of the leaving group, which is nicotinamide. Now that actually covalently links the phosphate right here to the remainder of the NAD ring. Now this 2 prime phosphate is, is attached to the remainder of the NAD nucleotide. So what's going to happen now is the, the uh, 2 prime hydroxyl group of the nucleotide is going to attack the phosphate in a phosphoryl substitution, which causes the production of the free 2 prime hydroxyl group on the tRNA. And that's what gets rid of uh, the phosphate on the 2 prime position. So that's 2 prime phosphotransferase, and then you get this ADP ribose 1 prime 2 prime phosphate. Um, this will be ultimately removed by the by an action, action of a cyclic phosphodiesterase. Okay, it's going to be hydrolyzed, and then this will ultimately be recycled. Okay, but that's going to give us our mature tRNA, and that's what we see right here. Now, from the very large point of view, when we remove this intron through the splicing mechanism we just saw through those five enzymes, we now have the production of what's called an anticodon loop. The anticodon loop, as we said, is going to be what interacts with the codon of the mRNA and allows the codon to dictate which amino acid is brought to the ribosome. Because remember, each tRNA can only bring one amino acid, so they're very specific. All right, So we just got through that. Um, we talked about these uh, nitrogenous bases briefly, but now that we've at least seen some of them, we're going to go over the mechanisms of how you form some of these, okay? And then we'll actually get more or less into uh, a translation and so on and so forth, okay? So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.